Hello, I'm Joe Haddo and this is our series of interviews with the Theakston's Old Peculiar Crime Novel of the Year Award long listees. Produced and curated by Harrogate International Festivals in partnership with Theakston's Old Peculiar, WH Smith and The Express and it's great to have you with us. Today I'm joined by an author who studied law in London before settling in rural Sweden where he built a wooden house in a bog. In fact, I think that's where he joins us from today. He's here to talk about his new novel, Red Snow. I'm thrilled to be joined by Will Dean. Hello. Hello, Joe. It is good to see you. I'm, I've got to say, it's like looking in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit. If, if only I thought to wear my checkered shirt as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really great to, to see you, sadly not in person, but we did um, we did see each other about six months ago, I think. So, you know, I don't feel like... I don't feel like it's been that long since we were yeah. able to be in the same room. <laughs> and uh, sadly for me, that was you being over here and not me being in deepest, darkest Sweden. So how is it out there in the wilds? It's, I mean, it, you're always welcome, Joe, first of all, out here. If you can find <laughs> us, you can come. Uh, but it's, it's, it's okay, you know. Sweden isn't really in lockdown, which feels quite strange. Uh, but us in the forest, we don't really see anybody. We don't. We we we're used to going to the supermarket once every three weeks, and we're used to you know just before this this call, I was out by my well pumping, hand pumping the water to to water my potatoes. So, wow. Yeah, the only weird thing is that we don't see planes flying overhead anymore. We used to see trails in the sky from planes, and they've gone. Yeah, so that does but feel actually, quite eerie. For you, it's it's not been that much of a change over the last six or seven weeks. Not really. Obviously, you know, I'm worried about relatives, elderly relatives in different places. And I've got my six-year-old here every day who insists on being Batman every day, the full costume, <laughs> the cape, the hat. Uh, so Very that. similar like to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My wife finds it strange, but you know. Um, I want to talk about your <laughs> She'll second. Get used to it. <laughs> she will. Yeah. I want to talk about this second novel of yours, then, uh, which has been long listed, and it's the second novel to feature reporter Tuva Mudison. So, can you tell us about her for those that might not have read any of your books before, and a little bit about this case that she's trying to solve as well? Absolutely. So, yeah, Red Snow is the second Tuva Mudisan book, as you said. Tuva is a young deaf journalist, and she works at a local newspaper in a fictional creepy town called Gavrik in central Sweden. And if you can imagine something from Twin Peaks or Fargo or Northern Exposure, a really eccentric little town where everybody knows each other, and there's one bar, that's the town that I write. And with Red Snow, it starts in... February, the coldest time of the year, where it's kind of minus 25 degrees. She's driving along in her truck and she passes the Grimberg Licorice Factory, which is the biggest employer in the whole town. It's an old Gothic licorice factory with twin brick chimneys. And she notices there are people outside hovering around, milling around in the middle of the street. And I can tell you from experience that doesn't happen when it's minus 25. You don't <laughs> hang around on the street. So she she, she looks at them and she looks up and they're all staring at a man in a suit climbing the ladder fixed to one of these brick chimneys. And then this man jumps. And that's the opening of the novel. And she has to figure out, Tuba has to figure out, was that jump a suicide or was it in fact a murder? It's such a great book and I enjoy reading it. And I've read your latest book as well because that's why we... Uh, we're together, as I mentioned before Christmas, talking about that. Um, she's such a great character, Tuba. Um, I mean, she hates nature. She's deaf, as you mentioned, and of course she's a woman. So she couldn't be much more different than you. <laughs> and um, I just wondered what drew you to writing her specifically. It all came from a big failure of mine. So I spent years in the woods trying to write a book. And that book has never been published and it will never be published. And it's locked in a drawer and it's awful. It's really bad. It's a stinker. And the protagonist of that book is basically me, but five centimeters taller. And he's extremely dull. He's very boring. He's very much like I, I fell into that trap that all debut writers do is you write yourself or a version of yourself. So with Dark Pines, when I, when I was planning it out or thinking about it, I wanted to write 
a main character who was absolutely not me. And therefore someone who I could learn about through each book. And, you know, right now I'm in the process of writing the first draft of two of a number five. I still haven't figured her out. She still surprises me. I'm still working through who she is as a person and who she's going to become as a person. So I'm really happy that I'm not writing myself and I'm writing somebody completely different. That must be quite exciting as well for you to, to not know where she is going to take you and indeed take the next story. That must be quite a thrilling experience when you sit down to write a new manuscript. It is. And it, it keeps it fresh for me because I can see kind of a book ahead. You know, I'm already, now I'm writing Tuva number five. I'm thinking about Tuva number six, which is the wrong thing to be doing. I should be focused on Tuva <laughs> five, but I'm always thinking one book ahead, but I can't see more than one book ahead. So Tuva seven, eight, nine, I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no idea what, what changes she's going to go through kind of internally, you know, in her own mind, in her own opinions, her own consciousness. So it does keep it fresh and it keeps me on my toes. She definitely keeps me on my toes. Did you always see her as a series character? Not at all. I, I had very little confidence in these, in, in my writing at all. After being rejected for so many years with that, that book that's locked in a drawer, I just sat down and tried to write Dark Pines and I saw it as this very small, tight book. And I definitely didn't see a sequel or a book three or a book four. I just was relieved that I could write something and it felt natural and organic and it wasn't forced. And um, now I just feel very lucky that I get to write her every year. The, the, I write my first drafts in four weeks and that month each year is my favorite month of the year. Wow. That seems pretty quick to me, but maybe that, I mean, everyone works differently, but that's quite a concentrated amount of time just to get yeah. the words down, isn't it? It's not a healthy thing. It's not, I don't <laughs> recommend it to anybody. Honestly, it's weird. I'm, a, I'm like a zombie for the month. And then it still takes me the same amount of time as all of my peers because I have to rewrite the thing so many times. So my first draft is fast, but then I have to do so many other rewrites. So it still takes me a, a year to write a book full time. So. The wonderful Val McDermott, who is also on this long list, invited you to be on her new blood panel at Harrogate, didn't she, a couple of years ago. What did that mean to you then? And what do you think it did in terms of your writing career? Genuinely, it meant the world to me because, you know, it's nice to have good sales and it's nice to have foreign deals and TV deals, but having someone like Val, who everyone loves and respects, and I've enjoyed reading for years and years and years, having her pick out your book as one of her favorite debuts of the year is, is huge. It really is. And I feel, I feel very, very lucky and very grateful even now. And back in 2017, I was at Harrogate as a reader. I had, my book wasn't out until 2018. And I remember going to the new blood panel, sitting at the back and watching Val with Fiona Cummins and Joseph Knox and Jane Harper. And it was just incredible. It was such an amazing experience. And I didn't think for one second that I would be up there the year after. I couldn't have dreamt that. So it was a, it was a shock. And especially as I'm published by, you know, a small indie publisher, it was a shock and it was uh, one of the highlights of my career for sure. And it's, it's helped me a lot because it's, it's, it's one of those kind of things that you can't buy, you know? It's, so it's, it's wonderful for, for an indie publisher, especially to get something like that, because it's, it's just such a, such a nice mark to have and a, and a, a nice bit of recognition for the book. So yeah, I'm, I feel very lucky. And it's one of those panels at Harrogate that is often the most talked about. It's, it's always very exciting. People want to go and see, you know, the authors and the books that she's picked every year. Uh, so to be a part of that, I imagine, was, was pretty special, especially as you'd gone to, to see the panel, you know, just as an observer, like you said. It's huge. It's such a buzzing panel. I mean, Harrogate buzzes anyway. It's got this, as you know, it's got a special kind of feel to it, a special atmosphere. But that panel is something quite special. The authors feel so lucky and blessed to be there. Val McDermott is such a generous person chairing the panel, how she does it, how she pulls the best of the authors out of themselves. You know, in that, whatever it is, our session is fantastic. And it's one of the best panels I'll ever be on in my life. It really is a, a great thing. And she, as I mentioned, along with you and 16 other 
authors are on this long list and it's such a great long list and all the books on there because of course i've read them all are fantastic do you have any favorites of the ones that you might have read from the list like like a lot of them <laughs> honestly i've read a, i've read a lot of these books I've, I've a lot of these authors are my heroes and my friends so it feels kind of strange seeing my book up there with their books in a way but um no i'm a huge fan of a lot of those authors obviously val's writing is is awesome i loved my sister the serial killer that was a standout book for me i loved uh conviction by denise minor i thought was great and it's the kind of that's the kind of book that if i could read it for the first time right now during lockdown during this situation and go off to the ile de Ray in france and go off on that train journey and go off to scotland through that book then i would you know it's such a good book that's yeah real escapism in the form of different countries <laughs> which is Absolutely. quite nice isn't it <laughs> yeah. um how did it feel then to hear that you'd been long listed for the biggest award in crime fiction it just felt it felt weird and <laughs> bananas and i was over the moon i was obviously i was not expecting this at all and like i say they're, they're the authors that i when i when i do eventually go and find a bookshop because there are none around here but when I do, you know, I've got an event in London or in Belfast or something, and I try and go to an independent bookshop and I find that they're the books that I buy. They're the books that I seek out. So to see my book, which is a weird book, up there with those books is, is bizarre. I'm, I'm surprised my book ever got published. Never mind, long listed. It's such a strange book. You know, it's full <laughs> of licorice and uh, kind of witches who live in a factory. It's a very strange book. It really is odd. It's very... It's, it's weirder than Twin Peaks. So, yeah, it's, 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 it means the world to me. I'm, I'm still shocked and still, um, yeah, I just feel very happy. And it, you've alluded to it, but it is full of all your books. They're, they're sort of full of eccentric characters, which I guess comes with, with being in Gavrick. Um, and I think many people who read your first book, Dark Pines, will have been glad to see the return, albeit briefly, of the Troll Carving Sisters. <laughs> they are great fun. They are great fun to write. Alice and Corley, Cornelia are great fun to write. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, some of my neighbours resemble these guys, so I've got to be careful what I say. But uh, yeah, they they carve these very intricate, quite expensive wooden tr trolls that they sell at craft fairs. And when I went to a craft fair, the local farm, five years ago, there were these very stern-looking people, rural people, selling these. They were intricately knitted. They weren't carved, but uh, Christmas trolls and Christmas uh, kind of father, Santas. And they were hundreds of pounds. And they were really creepy looking with huge eyes or with, you know, they were just very, they freaked me out. And I thought I have to write some kind of character like this because these people do exist, you know, especially in, in rural Sweden. These, these, these guys are living all around us. So. <laughs> um, before I, I let you go and, and return to your well, um, let me just ask you, what does the Theakston's Old Peculiar Crime Novel of the Year mean to you? Because we, you've already said you went to Harrogate as a, a reader, you returned on the New Blood panel, and now you've been longlisted. So this award, you know, what does it actually mean to you as someone who may well win it this year and to someone who's read so many of the previous winners? I'm not going to win it, that's for sure. To start with, I, I doubt if I would be shortlisted. Very much doubt that. I think it's just, it just gives me a lump in my throat, to be fair, because I'm new, I'm new on the scene. I'm this weird writer who lives in a bog in another country. And to have my books up there with the books of people that I really, really admire and I really learn a lot from their writing, to have that happen this year is just huge. It really is. It's uh, yeah, it makes me emotional. It makes me just feel very, very grateful indeed that my agent picked me up out of the slush pile, that my publisher took a huge gamble on Dark Pines. It just makes me feel very grateful and very happy to be part of the crime writing community, which is such a generous, supportive group of good people. Yeah, they and, really are. Uh, yeah. I, I think at, at Harrogate in, in particular, you you really get that community spirit, don't you, with everyone's just so generous with new writers and with fans you know it really does feel like that's the place of crime writing community 
hundred percent. Those beer tents, are oh. the best place in the world. You know, that weekend <laughs> in July, those beer tents are the best place in the world. <laughs> they really are. Uh, we've been talking about Red Snow. It's published by One World. And just a reminder that if um, you have read this book and you love it, it's your chance to vote for this book to appear on the shortlist. Uh, and if you haven't read it, then you should. And you can buy it from WH Smith, of course, read and enjoy it. And then to vote for Will's book, you go to harrogatefeakstoncrimeaward.com. Com. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to see you via uh, technology, Will, and to speak to you about this book. And uh, I hope uh, that soon we'll be able to do it in person again. I hope so too. I really do. Thank you very much, Joe.